All right, Nona, episode six of the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Welcome, everybody. Um, happy to have you here. Those of you that have tolerated us through the first couple episodes and technical difficulties and getting audio and video correct and all that good stuff, I promise you this will be a continual improvement. Promise? Promise. And we'll you said you don't make any promises. One day, somebody's going to give us money for better equipment. Yeah. Clearly, we have the time for this. Actually, we don't. We just make the time. But clearly, we have the talent for it. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Okay. We do. Talent. Yeah. We are the most talented couples podcast. So here's a funny story. There is a couple. They're psychologists, psychiatrists, one of the two, okay. they specify, like in their bio, that they are a black couple and either psychologist, psychiatrist, their podcast name is very similar. Oh my goodness. What is it? It's, uh, he's wrong or he's right. She's always correct. Like it, it's like they're both right, but They've been doing it for far longer, and we've already surpassed them in every metric. So they're not doing very well. They're not very good at this. I didn't know they existed until right now. I found out earlier. Did somebody tell you, or did you just stumble upon them by accident? No, I was just seeing if our Google Knowledge Graph card existed yet. And when you, I was doing. Sorry, Google what? You know, when, uh, when you pull up a business and you get the My Business Profile card? Yes. There's a similar kind. It's called a Knowledge Graph card because that's. The information exists in what Google calls the knowledge graph. Facebook has open graph. It's SEO, SEO stuff. Just you don't you don't need to know the technicalities. But it's the same thing as a business profile, but for media. Like every time you pulled up a movie and it's giving you like the movie poster and links and where to watch and ratings and it's a knowledge graph. Okay. So I was seeing if ours was up yet. Is it? Yep. Oh, fancy. So um YouTube and Spotify are responsible for making that happen. Only because I configured everything correctly, but. Good job. Yeah. You did your job. I did. Because that's the only thing I'm actually good at is technical. Yeah, at least you admit it. Yeah. All right. Um, in the last podcast, <laughs> you said that the kid from The Gentleman is probably on the spectrum because he's good with numbers. No, that's not what I said. I said that it was stated in the episode that he stated he was obsessed with numbers and he implied that he was on the spectrum. I did not say because he was good with numbers, he was on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. It was the implication. Uh I don't know. My question then is. Then let's go rewatch the episode. My question then is. Let's I, go rewatch the episode. I did. My, you rewatched the entire episode. I scrubbed through and I watched a lot of it. I had to do audio checks throughout to make sure that it was going to render correctly. I meant the episode of The Gentleman. Oh, okay. Not oh. our podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I got another cough drop in. Fortunately, is most. Your last one? Yeah. All right, you have to get better. Yep. We're just not recording anymore. <laughs> this might be the last episode. Um, do you think all Asians are autistic? Oh, my God. Uh, no. I'm not going to put a blanket statement like that, and absolutely not. No. The The idea of Tiger Mom came from Asian culture of that is they are forced to be good at something. And if you do not have A's, you are not good enough. Well, imagine, look at how competitive our culture is and we only have I do not 300, 400 million people. I think that they are artistic. No, but hear me out. You know how competitive our culture is. We have roughly a third. I say that our culture is anywhere near competitive. Oh yeah, it is. No, 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 it's competitive. We just have more people that give up because they don't have parents that push them. But 
the people that are competing for the top and the people that are competing for the middle are competitive. They just will literally commit suicide if they don't appease their fin. Or I'm sorry, sewer slide. <laughs> um, whereas ours don't. I mean, I think South Korea. I think one of their former presidents jumped off a bridge and like a former president. And it wasn't anything that anybody thought was a cover up or any scandal. I think he is. He like cheated on his wife and got caught or something like that and jumped off a bridge and killed himself. Again, I don't think you're allowed to say those words. We'll bleep them. We'll find out. We can always re-upload the episode later. Oh, Andrew, Andrew. It's marked as explicit. So we should be able to get away with it. And it's marked as not intended for children. So we'll see. Because we're not trying to pretend that we're made for kids. That's what a lot of these content creators do. They pretend they're made for kids to try and saturate the audience size. We're just skipping that part. There's no pretending here. Because I believe, I believe that the algorithm eventually will favor us more because we didn't artificially inflate our audience. I think the more organic audience we grow, the better we'll perform in the long run. I've seen that happen with pretty much all other products because we're, we're going for the slow burn. We're not running ads yet. We're getting traffic organically. We're asking people to search for us rather than, you know, I mean, we have links and stuff like that, but search is one of the signals. When people are searching for you, find you, click through and subscribe to you, that looks better than them accidentally stumbling in. I mean, for the algorithm, it wants a little bit of everything, but if you can make it look like people are organically looking for you, they're more prone to show you to more people that look like that audience. Look alike audience. That's why it exists. Um, the camera's been on you the whole time. So, <laughs> um, communism. You're just saying a lot of words today aren't you that are gonna get a lot of people upset with you maybe what about it let's go back to the i mean let's t let's talk about all of it okay about the families pushing their children to do or else partly i mean they literally live under threat of their government executing them or putting them in a re-education camp. Mm -hmm. They're, China is literally Asia's Nazis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Education camps, re-education camps. Yeah, forced labor, child labor. Yeah, all for what? All for what, Andrew? Well, they want to be the number one global superpower. It's, we are enemy number one for all of the communist globe. And for what? For control. Do you think they will succeed that in this lifetime? No. No. And how will we stop them? How we always have. Mm -hmm. Right now, economic sanctions and cordoning them off. They've learned some of the plays from our playbook. They're trying to take over um, some smaller islands or create artificial islands in the South China Sea to open up shipping lanes to get around shipping sanctions and economic sanctions and things like that. Because every country has a uh, exclusion zone for economic activity, like you can't go ship or you can't go fish X amount of miles offshore of the U S if you're a foreigner right. and profit off of that. And it's like a hundred miles or something like that. But then there are also, there's other carve outs as well, because there's not a perfectly defined line like we have for land borders. So you have these pockets where these little islands or artificial islands are 
that they gain the exclusion zone around that, which opens holes in what would have otherwise been closed off shipping lanes or economic lanes. But everybody likes to point out the number that the Navy or the Chinese Navy has more ships than us now. But the ships that they have are smaller, less capable, slower. They have fewer aircraft carriers than we do. They're not as capable as we are. And the biggest key point that most of them overlook is the U.S. has land carriers. We've moved away from exclusively using aircraft carriers that can sail around. Turn the volume down, so I stop hearing the echo. We've moved away from doing that. I mean, we still have them. We're still building them. We will always have them. We will always build them because having the most powerful Navy is important. But we have all of these Pacific islands and islands and the Indian Ocean and basically all over the globe that are effectively nothing other than landing strips, air bases that serve as a parked aircraft carrier. So we have more capability than any other country. This is why Russia and China are the, have you ever heard of the road and belt? I think it's called road and belt, road and belt um, initiative that China has. No. So they have economic projects in other countries uh, like Africa, African countries where they'll fully fund an architecture or, um, uh, engineering project or civil engineering project, they'll build you a road, they'll build you a dam, whatever, but they get full ownership of it and any, you know, some sort of cut of profits if it's, you know. Uh, so it's a symbiotic relationship, but essentially it only benefits the yeah, they're Yeah, they're a parasite. Um, I mean, the U.S. has done it in some ways. However, most of what we have done has come after a war. Like we stayed in Europe to rebuild. Specifically Germany. We're in Italy. We're in Spain. We're in Poland. I know, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, we're, I, I don't know where every branch has an installation. We also have um, like multinational installations where several um, allied countries, we all have members of our branches there. Um even, you know, like the war in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, like the majority of what you think is just the U.S. going there, right? Like you don't really, you ever think about any of the other countries that were involved? Because it wasn't only us. Why don't you tell us since you were there? Well, most of these people know, but I mean, Australia, the British, Korea, they, they didn't do like, for a lot of other countries, it's mostly like we want to go train in the environment. We want to go learn. We want to observe um, things like that. So then we're really like involved, involved. But and in your beard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, anyways. Um, but we failed to stop the spread of communism in Vietnam. That was botched. We failed in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that they're communism. They're something just as bad. Um, I firmly believe that we are already in World War Three. Yeah. I've said that several times because it's... For the last year plus. It's just, Yeah, it's a slow burn. Um, World War II, World War I, you know, they started over a long period of time. Coincidentally, America was also averse to entering any other conflict at those times. Um, everyone wanted to keep everything here at home. Everyone wanted to take care of problems here at home. That should always be our number one priority to begin with anyways. But 
Same thing. We just got out of a forever war that effectively we lost. Everything that we had gained, we gave back. Um, nobody wants to send their kids to war. Nobody wants their kids to face the same kind of crap that our generation faced. So it's, we're literally repeating history. In every possible way. And I think that this one is going to get out of control really fast. What makes you say that? So TSMC, the Taiwanese semi Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, makes pretty much everything in your phone, makes everything in my phone. They make everything for Intel, AMD. They kind of have their own fabs, but effectively... They have a chokehold on the situation. Effectively, if Taiwan, who is actually China, falls back under Chinese rule, they get all of our trade secrets, they get access to all of our technology. That's what they want. They have what's called the One China doctrine or something like that there was like a specific timeline where they wanted to reunify all of china hong kong a couple years ago that was major domino to fall um they have a uh they basically have a, a, a las vegas type area that still kind of operates as its own sovereign entity uh macau is, i think is what it's called um they fell back under China rule, but they're basically mainland China, whereas Taiwan is an island. And if Taiwan falls, we kind of lose everything. So the U.S. government has been investing a lot of money into getting TSMC to open up fabs in uh, Arizona or New Mexico. And now they want visas for all of their employees. They're saying it's going to take longer if they can't get these people over here to work here. China doesn't want them coming here. In China's eyes, Taiwan is is currently effectively China. They're just in rebellion. In Taiwan's eyes, mainland China is in rebellion of them. They both claim to be China. We just don't call Taiwan China. Thank you for schooling us all. Well, these some of these people knew that already. Some of them. But same reason why China is helping out all these poor African countries, building uh, military installations and naval ports and things like that, airports that they control for the same reason. They're getting ready. They Well, not just they're getting ready. They want to surround the globe in the same way that we have because they know it's been effective for us because we have a very fast response time to pretty much anything. Somebody attacks one of our boats, the Navy's right there because we are patrolling the globe at all times. There's some sort of airstrike on an allied country. We have planes both on ships and on land somewhere probably close by. And they can respond relatively quickly. This is also a big reason why this new space race is a big deal. Access to space also means weapons in space. It also means getting stuff to where you need it quickly is also a much more viable option now. Starlink, or not Starlink, um, Starship. For example, the payload capability of Starship is ridiculous. Like, there's a um, uh, Tesla recorded a video at Starbase of one of the cyber trucks hauling one of the uh, um, Raptor engines for Starship. And this was a uh, uh, atmosphere Raptor engine, which are the smaller of the two. The vacuum engines are massive. It's bigger than the cyber truck. One, there's 33 just on the booster. That's how big, like the scale of it cannot be understood in pictures and video 
because there's no real scale comparison. Like, sure, they'll have you know video of people on the ground, but then you're looking up and you, it's like looking at a skyscraper. You don't know how big it is until you, you're on the inside and you're taking the elevator or trying to take the stairs and you're like, okay, this sucks. This is dumb. When you're standing outside, sure, it looks tall. But you don't really understand the scale. Like, I mean, even this house. This house doesn't appear from the street as large as it comfortably fits people inside of it. Okay. Right? So, I mean, the the tonnage that Starship can put into orbit is insane. And the, the speed at which it can do it is insane. I mean, it, it can fly... It can basically circumvent the entire globe in under an hour. Meaning we can get tanks from here to a conflict zone in an hour, theoretically. What's your prediction on timeline for that? Oh, the I mean, with how fast we're iterating and stuff like that, one of the things that they want to do is they want to build offshore barges with the Mechazilla deal. And Elon believes that this is the next mode of rich so people transportation. Five years? No, not five years. 25 years? Sure. I, I say no to five years because not that the technology can't get there, not that they can't do it. The red tape to get there? Yep. They're going to need approval. They're going to have to have safety reviews. Somebody's going to get in trouble. Somebody's going to sue Amazon, Boeing. Blue Origin. Everybody's going to have their lawsuits like they already do. Even. Blue Origin still exists. Yeah. Forgot about it. Um, I mean, just like the, the moon contract, the moon lander contract, like the other um, spacefaring organizations like ULA, which is a conglomerate of the different defense contractors, they sue each other just to be the one that provides the light switch. Like it's it's all infighting. Sounds like something you would do for fun. I, of course, I want the extra money, but that like they want it in writing. They don't want to. They don't want to win based on merit. They want the contract to have their name on it. They want to be the exclusive provider. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with the. Uh, other cargo and cruise ship that Boeing has been working on has all these failures over and over. I, I don't even think they've, I think they might've finally done a test recently, but regardless, like they were supposed to have been done like 10 years ago. Oh really? That yeah. long ago? Yeah. SpaceX is moving so fast that we're looking at like 150 launches this year. That's more than every country combined. That's more than every other organization, including the ones in the U.S. and the rest of the world combined. Based on uh, tonnage, volume of mass moved to space, mm -hmm. SpaceX leads, they have like 90% of share of what was moved to space last year, 90 or 95%. It's ridiculous, the amount. And it's because they're always changing and testing and changing and testing and changing and testing in rapid iteration. Whereas ULA, they play it safe. They have the same boosters and shuttle or not shuttle, uh, capsules and things like that, that they've had in development. They tear it apart, put it back together, tear it apart, put it back together, test it, tear it apart, put it back together, tear it apart, put it back together. So they don't have the same level of like testing experience. They're hoping that the first time they do it, it works. They were already supposed to have been done, tested, flown around the moon like five times by now. And Starship just launched again and hit pretty much every milestone. They expected both the ship and the booster to be expended. They got all kinds of data. They... The people that were um, broadcasting, like privately broadcasting the stream, because SpaceX doesn't do it on YouTube anymore. Dumb. Why don't they? Because they want video content to be exclusively on X, Twitter. 
they don't want you to go to YouTube anymore. They're just like how Facebook doesn't promote YouTube videos. So do you watch it on Twitter? I have to. If I want to watch the first party stream without other people's commentary. If I just want to hear SpaceX talk about SpaceX, yeah. But it's pain it's pain in the ass because they don't have an app for the TV. And that's where I like to consume that media, Elon. I like to watch it from the comfort of the couch, not holding my phone. I want to be able to watch it on the big screen. I don't want to watch it on my computer. I want to watch it on the big screen. I enjoy watching it. I think it's awesome. You know how many times I watched crew and um, resupply missions and Starlink missions because they all follow relatively the same trajectory. At the old house where there wasn't light pollution, I could watch it. I had the timing down perfectly because it's very consistent. Mm -hmm. I could watch the launch, watch some cool video angles, then I can go outside and I could literally watch it fly across the sky. And if they were flying to the station, that also meant that the station was following that same trajectory and it would always lead. So you could watch, depending on the time of the day, obviously, if it was too bright, you wouldn't see it, but you could watch the station fly across the skyline. And then about an hour later, you would watch the crew or resupply dragon fly across along the same line. Got some pretty cool video of it. Got some pretty cool pictures of it. Never anything with uh, like telephoto or anything like that. Just literally, you could just see it with your normal lens on your phone. Now it's just locked away as a core memory. Yeah. And I mean, I would love to go to Florida or Texas sometime and watch for real. Feel the shockwave. I think Starship would be like the closest I think they let the media get is three miles away. Imagine feeling a shockwave from a rocket three miles away. <laughs> All right. I didn't know you wanted to go. Yeah, of course I want to go. the first you've ever said that. Oh, of course I want to go. That was like, you know, uh, in the early days of shuttle, that was every kid's dream was to go to Florida and watch the shuttle take off and watch it explode. Fortunately, that's never happened with Dragon yet. Probably won't. But now, but now they're also, they're like the, the cadence and stuff is getting so ridiculous with this now that they are uh so um pad 39a was where the apollo missions took off from that's basically exclusively spacex's at this point they're the only one that launches from there with exception now they're taking over pad 40 built a whole new tower and a whole new escape system and there's a whole new uh dragon 2 capsule i don't know what all that involves but um i was watching a video of them testing the escape system it's basically like a giant slide, but you're like, I don't, I don't know how, I don't even remember how tall it is, but it's like 20, 30 stories up. Could you imagine riding a slide? No, and you got, could not. And you have to get away fast because the, the, the entire reason, the premise that it's there is in the event that the, uh, so they, when you're in the actual crew dragon, mm -hmm. they're the emergency escape system is literally rocket boosters. This thing is just gonna pop off the booster and shoot up as fast in a way as it can before whatever's happening in the booster can damage the capsule. So the G-forces are gonna be ridiculous. I don't think they've ever actually tested with a person in it, but that's probably a good thing. So they probably turn into a puddle on the inside, but I have seen like the, the actual test of it and literally it's the, the, uh, did they use like a crash test on it? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they did something, but, um, yeah, they literally, when they're in there, once that door closes and the countdown starts, because of all the propellant that's being loaded underneath them, they are literally sitting on top of a fucking bomb that it has to move fast. And now this new slide thing, you still have to get away from it. And, and get away from it fast, but instead of going up, they're going to go down, and it's a slide. And uh, it looked pretty cool. It'd mm -hmm. probably be scary as hell. Boy. It's better than dying. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you survive without injury, it's Maybe. better than dying. Maybe. But, um, 
Yeah, of course. Of course I want to see that. Good to know. The sound, the... If you live till 50, we can go on your 50th birthday. How long? How, what is that? 14 years? Something like that. We gotta go before then. That costs money. But they are building uh, another Starship launch facility in Florida as well. Uh, development and launch. That was the big thing for the shuttle and with uh, the current size of um, uh, Falcon 9 and the, the boosters. They have to be able to transport them on the highway. So that restricted the size. So now they're literally just building the factory at the launch facility. Now you don't have to transport it anywhere. But if you want to, they're all on the water so you can put it on the barge. There's no, gotcha. you're not restricted in size anymore. I mean, they literally had to strap the um, shuttle to the top of a 747 and fly it to where they needed it to. They literally had a plane. When was this? Huh? When was this? Every time. I didn't know. Yeah, all the ones that are in museums and stuff right now, that's how they do that as well. They literally they literally modified like 747s with these brackets on top and they just put the shuttle right on top of it, fly both of them together so they don't have to take it apart. They don't have to worry about transporting on the road. I wonder how the takeoff and landing was on the I don't know. I don't when I look at a C seventeen and I see the landing gear, it's like the tire literally sticks out. I mean I'm exaggerating, it's probably like as much as this table. But if you looked at the landing gear, it's not like a traditional passenger plane like you would think of. They're sitting on the belly. And it is when you see it on the tarmac, like how in the world? Because they have to come in, you know, at such a steep angle. Mm -hmm. And there's like no margin for error. The math isn't mathing. In in your brain, because you're used to seeing right. the whole tall landing gear, suspension, everything mm -hmm. like that. On that, you see about half the wheel and tire. Everything else is tucked in. Crazy. Yeah, but that's also a uh, function of what the purpose of the plane is, which is cargo and crew transportation, including tanks can't exactly drive a tank into a traditional plane. Right. Got to have that loading ramp and, or like, um, I can't remember the name of the plane, but um, the ones back in the day where the actual nose cone flipped up. So you yeah. actually loaded through the nose rather than through the tail. There's a uh, C-130J Ghost Rider at ILM right now, I just saw. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which is cash to go look at it. Sure. It's one of the gunship ones. That's what the C one C one thirty J Ghost Rider is. So it's got like the um I think it's a hundred millimeter cannon and thirty millimeter. It's the shit out of video. Like these planes they bank so that like they literally just fly in a circle and they just bank the entire time so they can shoot down the ground. But it's so much power that it literally like pushes the it sideways. Well, the even the um, the uh, gal, whatever it is, on the uh, A ten Warthog, it literally has it. It produces so much uh, power, or uh, I can't think of the terminology for it right now. I'm having one of those moments, but the you know the equal and opposite, yeah, yeah. yeah. So every time a round is fired, it actually is pushing against the plane and halving the thrust of the engines. So theoretically, it could cause the plane to stall and fall out of the sky. Would you fly one? Oh, I'd love to be in an A-10. That'd be awesome. Being in one and flying it is not the same. Well, I don't know how to fly, so. Learn. Yeah, sure, learn. That plane is crazy too, though, and they're... 60, 70 years later, the Air Force is still trying to get rid of it, and everybody's like, nope, that's not going to happen. We're keeping it forever. <laughs> it's what, do, what do people want to replace it with? They think that, like the F-35 and the F-35 variations can do pretty much everything that the A-10 could do. But they can't. Um, yes, but it's 
there's more to it. There's psychological, both for us and for the enemy. When you hear that slow moving plane coming, yeah, and, you're about to die. And you hear, <laughs> you hear the cannon. You're like, oh fuck. But if you're on our side, you're like, yes, <laughs> freedom bonus. <laughs> Freedom boner. Yep. Okay, I've heard it all now. I think you need a shirt that says that. I do. Freedom boner shirt's coming soon. Okay. Yeah. Is that our first merch? Yeah. Freedom boner. Freedom boner. It'll be an A10. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll talk to Aaron, provost. I was about to say, I don't think your client will want to uh, print freedom boner. Oh, he totally will. They'll, really? Yeah. They just won't put it in their packaging or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Freedom boner. Yeah. But if we can what get. What would the image be? Like a solid fist? Well, the fisters have that. That's... I don't know what that is, <laughs> but that sounds terrible. No, I was thinking out. Out. <laughs> Our <laughs> logo, the the man from our logo, you essentially. Oh, you're talking about the ring rings. Yeah. Okay. Making a solid fist and freedom boner, like in the kapowi. We got to figure out, um, figure out a way, like, and obviously red, white, and blue to see like the A10 pilot, and like, like coming behind it, and his hand will be on the stick, but it's also on the stick. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if anybody is an artist and wants to create this for us, you'll get a I'm, free shirt out of I'm, it. I'm, well, he's in charge of us. I'm gonna ask Aaron. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm serious. I'm gonna ask him. As I, uh, I like his artwork. He's the one that's uh, the desk mat, mine and yeah. Cooper's. Those are from his company. He used to work for Ranger Up. That's how I know him. I met him when I first moved down here. Stopped in, hung out with him for a little bit. Freedom Boner. Yep. First merch. Yep. It's going to sell out because we're only going to make one. <laughs> Freedom Boner is the, oh, yes. I'm trying to uh, think of the best way to make this sound funny, but it's like the Viagra for communism, anti-communist Viagra. I don't think there's any <laughs> funny way to put that. For the uh, audio audience, you really, you really should watch the video for the reactions. <laughs> um, yeah, totally, hundred percent. Freedom boner. Freedom boner. Okay. It'll be out before July fourth. Well, it'll be out way before then too. We got to beat everybody else in the bunch. Somebody else will take the idea now that they've heard it. Okay. Um. Anyways. Anyway. Back to communism. Okay. What a great topic. Yeah. Uh, the the fat electrician, he was on ups, unsubscribe podcast with uh, Donut, Eli, and those guys. Um, Their name is unsubscribe? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually yeah. funny. It's uh, I've done that. Eli Cuevas from uh, Black Rifle, yeah. I'm friends with. Um, I don't know any of these people. You've seen some of Donut's videos and stuff, and you've seen Eli and some of... Uh, like some other like black rifle videos and stuff like that, or even like the commercial that Black Friday commercial I showed you years ago. Okay. Well, anyways, um, they were talking about roundabouts. Okay. And how it's like the communist utopia. It's it only it only really works when there's no other cars. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. For those of you who don't know Andrew, he hates roundabouts. It's not even that I hate roundabouts. It's that I... He says that civil engineers put them in place to torture us. It, they, they have not actually improved traffic. That's stupid. They call it a diverging diamond. The, that 133, 74, mm -hmm. 1776 exit mm -hmm. in Leland. Mm -hmm. It's called a divergent diamond. Mm -hmm. It's the retarded figure eight. Yes. It has not made anything better. They would have been better putting real exits 
real on-ramps, real off-ramps, and nixing the stoplights. People are stopping so far back into the intersection that the next wave of traffic can't even go anyways. Correct. They didn't solve anything. If anything, they made the problem worse, and now they're going to have another stoplight right down the road that's going to congest traffic even more. Correct. Aren't you glad we don't live in Leland anymore? But So that's that's the thing. Like When they do these traffic surveys, they put the little thing across the road, and they measure how many cars travel mm-hmm. over a period of time. Mm-hmm. Great. You understand the traffic now. That's not the traffic that's going to be when your city continues developing. So you're building infrastructure for what is and not even keeping up with the demand as it grows. Then you have all of these U-turns where you have to go out of your way Mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. You want to cross a road? No, 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 no. You have to drive you need a, a mile down the road and do a U-turn yeah. to go back. There's another light to come back and stop at the same light that you're already sitting at. Just across the road. Mm-hmm. You want to go from one shopping center to the other? No. No, you're going to go that way, and then you're going to come back, and you're going to have to fight multiple lanes of traffic because we can't figure out a way with existing things like stoplights to allow traffic to cross an intersection. And to Andrew, this is Leland's version of communism. It's not just Leland. It's like most of North Carolina is like this. Wilmington has a lot of it too. Like there's, you have uh, uh, somebody, I think Rick actually was the first one that ever told me this when I moved down here when I first met him. Um, Different Rick. That, no, same Rick. Yeah. No, I've not, I knew I knew Rick Cheek before I moved here. Um, They call the center turn lane or he calls the center turn lane suicide lane. You had never heard that before? No, that's, we, we, where I'm from, there's no, like, U-turns are basically illegal, effectively, because there's no reason to do them. The only reason that you would ever do a U-turn is if you got to the intersection and realized that you needed to go back and you didn't want to pull in somewhere to turn around. Okay. I had never done a U-turn until I moved here. Really? Didn't need to. Okay. So, we'll come back to this in a second, but this is also why all the climate change stuff is absolute bullshit. Waiting for this theory of yours. Think about it. I, I had this conversation with Chloe. Yes. If all the emissions and everything are really that bad, mm-hmm. why would we allow civil engineers to design projects where more fuel has to be burned. Mm -hmm. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. It's ridiculous. They've been saying for decades, there's the, the problems, there's something new. There's some other reason. Now the cows fart too much. Like seriously, it's, it's insanity. We are changing the planet or cutting down trees or building dumb things that don't need to exist. We're pouring concrete where trees used to be. We are heating up the environment. Cars play a very small role in that. In fact, there's been reports on carbon emissions from like first world, third world countries and everything like that. The U.S. has been on the decline for a long time. Whereas China and India have only been exploding. Every little thing that you think you're doing to better the environment is being counteracted by 50 billion people somewhere else. Okay, 5 billion people, not 50. Your Prius is not saving anything. But yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, a lot of these projects as well are, like, for the reason why you said you picked Mallory Creek. The sweeping, winding roads. There's no reason for that in a neighborhood. They do it for aesthetic and be. It, it was down 133. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that was why you picked over there, but I'm saying that. And that, that road was more specifically designed because it was the easiest path with existing land structures mm-hmm. and. Coming off of the river. 
Yeah. That, but that, like the, that was the sweeping rain, winding road that was tree lined. I know, I know. But I'm that I was but I'm so stating. Not within the neighborhood. The efficient the efficient design and structure would be grids. Mm-hmm. The neighborhoods, everybody would have a perfect square or rectangle. Right. But it, even though these are boring cookie cutter houses, they're trying to make them not be boring and cookie cutter. But the reason that um, Brunswick Forest Parkway sweeps back and forth like this mm-hmm. is not for aesthetics. It's to slow traffic. Oh, I could see that. But it doesn't do that because real humans... A.K.A. Andrew. Don't follow... A.K.A. Andrew. Don't follow all of these concepts that they run through a computer. Like, they, they create, like, this utopia. They're like, people, the speed limit is 40. Every car will drive 40. Every car will start and stop at the exact same time. There will be no... Like Sim City. Yeah, there will be no accordion. It'll be everybody just moves at the same time. Everybody mm-hmm. stops at the same time. Humans don't act like that. And even if they wanted to, they couldn't. Somebody's always looking at something. People rubbernecking, looking at traffic accidents. Speaking of. Playing on their phones. Speaking of. Would you like to care to enlighten the listeners of your recent one? I've never been in a car accident. I'm <laughs> just kidding. No. I'm not going to talk about that. Why? Because. Okay. Isn't it still, are we still dealing with insurance? No, it's clo- It's a closed case. Fully closed. I just sent you a screenshot. Why did you send me the person's phone number? That was the claim number. Oh, it looked like a phone number. It's the claim number and it's closed and they're paying out one thousand two hundred or one thousand four hundred and something dollars. Oh. I was making a right turn. The car in front of me had fully passed the line, so I was looking left, waiting for traffic to clear, let off the brake, and for whatever reason they decided that they were gonna sit in the road rather than drive and bump them, no damage to our vehicle. They tried to claim additional damage. Your vehicle? Your vehicle. They tried to claim that there was additional damage caused, but I took, I walked around their entire vehicle and took video. Their front bumper was hanging off. They had rust. All four of their wheels looked like they only rode against the curb. Um, Mm -hmm. Panels falling off everywhere, Mm -hmm. cracked headlights. And uh, they tried to claim that we damaged their uh, trunk lid. And when I touched the paint, it just fell off their bumper. And that was not as a result of us bumping them at one mile an hour. It was... uh, But then the icing on the cake was that she stated I was the driver. Yes. (laughs) And so now I'm just mad about the whole situation because we have police report by the way for those that are going to ask why would insurance pay out on a fraudulent claim that is all around fraudulent and we've proved that she is lying but on top of that i wasn't even the driver i was the owner of the vehicle i am the primary on the insurance but i was not the driver your industry fix it oh i am mad hence why called her supervisor and gave the supervisor your phone number to talk to. Oh, you know that I don't answer calls. If they're not going to leave something on call screen, I'm never going to... If I responded to every call that didn't respond to call screen, that's all I'd be doing all day. I get 20 to 30 calls a day. So if you're not in my... So we're being the claims adjuster, not the claimant. If you're if you're not in my phone as a contact, you're automatically going to be screened every time. It doesn't matter if you call me five times, ten times, or a hundred times. Your call is going to be screened every single time. And if you don't want to say who you are or why you're calling after the second time or so, I just mark your number as spam and be done with it. And it never comes through to my phone again. I don't have time 
I used to just answer the phone and mute it before call screen was a thing. I would literally answer my phone, mute my microphone, and let them talk to themselves until they hung up and stopped calling me. And if you don't have call screen, that's an effective way to get yourself off of all these spam calling lists. Why do you get spam so much? Because I've had the same number forever. I've had the same email addresses forever. And eventually this shit gets leaked and somebody buys it and somebody else sells it. Somebody buys it. Somebody else sells it. So. Would you like to talk about the latest leak? So my at and mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I'm trying to claim that. The information that came from that wasn't from them. So either they sold it and it all happened to be their customers or. Do you want to look up if I was? I have at and I pay for our internet. Oh, have I been pwned.com. While she's looking that up, have I been pwned is amazing. It's a security research project. A lot of people have probably heard of it. It's H A V E. I P W N E D dot com, right? This? Oh, I forgot the word pen. Yes, that is the website. And I just check my email? Yeah. And it'll tell you if it's been found on the list anymore. They tell you how it was found, who found it, what additional information. Yep. Scroll down. It'll it's below all that stuff. Alleged. That's the same one. That's the same one. In March 2024, tens of millions of records allegedly breached from AT&T were posted to a popular hacking forum. And you know how we can corroborate that it has to be AT&T? Because you weren't on the other internet. I was. That's correct. And you're on the one here and we're not. Yep. And that was the only thing that I have with AT&T. Interdasting. So they have your social security number, your phone number, yeah. your date of birth, your driver's I've license. I've never been pwned before because he's done the search for me before. What? The last one was like maybe six months ago? No. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. And prior and like prior to that, about once a year, you've checked for me. I get emails all the time because uh, uh, never been. eventually now that, now that it's happened once. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to start to happen. Yep. I'm going to start to get spam calls. Yep. And those lists are going to get leaked, and then the lists that were derived from those are going to get leaked. Somebody's alarm was going off, and hopefully you guys couldn't hear that. Hopefully I did my job. Hopefully. Well. Wow. I was going to plug us earlier. I forgot to do that again. Go ahead. Do what you do best. Plug yourself. You p- could plug it in any hole possible. I know you could. No. Yes. Um, visit nonaphelps.com for insurance in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. If you want to sponsor us, visit he's wrong, she's right, dot com. Oh, um... We've never explicitly said this. I guess we kind of spelled her name in one episode, talking about the um, accent mark on the O. Oh, yeah. What about it? Go to N-O-N-A Phelps.com. Not N-O-N-N-A. Okay. She's not Italian. Okay. She's not Italian. In a way, you're kind of like Aaron. How so? My parents just made up the spelling for his name. That is not the same at all. It is the same. No, it's not at all. My name is real. Just because it's not real to you doesn't mean that it's not real. With the accent. Yes. What does it mean? It means nine. It also is the goddess of fertility. And I was the ninth grandchild, and I just happened to have lots of children. So it just happens to correlate. Got it. Visit nonofelps.com for all of your insurance needs. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for the Freedom Boner shirt. Yes. I'm actually excited to see this. Um, 
possibly other Freedom Boner merchandise. We'll see how that goes. Um, you can join the uh, Always Right Brigade. Oh, yeah. That's, about them. that's what I'm coining. Um, by leaving a comment. And once a week, we'll read some of them. We'll read them right on the podcast and pick. We'll select right on the podcast. Once I actually start leaving comments. Yeah, well, okay. and right on the podcast, we'll start reading them off. We'll pick out our favorites. Okay. Yep. And if you're selected, and if we have merchandise at that time, might be a perk to that. We don't know yet. This all this will be defined eventually. So don't don't hold me to anything. Hold him to we'll it. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, ask your grandma if she would listen to this podcast. Please don't. No, please do. Please do. I want grandma commenting in the comment section about how terrible we are. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Why? Because eventually we're going to be able to look back on this and we're going to be grandma and grandpa. And there's going to be something ridiculous where I'm like, those stupid people, 36-year-old man being lewd on the internet. But in but when we're old, it's going to be, you know, brain implants. We're all going to be transmitting thoughts to and from each other. Ew, I don't like that idea. You're going to have some d creep in the grocery store. You're going to be at Costco and he's going to be like literally snapping pictures of your butt with his brain implant. It's, it's coming. It's, it's gonna happen. Phew. It's gonna happen. It came to your mind because you planned to do it. No. Mm hmm No. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. No. People are already doing it with their glasses and sunglasses. Ew. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> That's one of the things that they were accusing um what's his name? The Marine. St uh, stallions, counter stallions. They they said that he was wearing the uh, meta Ray Ban glasses, and that he was on the sideline of one of our opponent's games. Mm. The he didn't he looked close. They I don't think it was him. How you know how difficult it is to get on the sidelines of some other team, let alone even the yeah, team that yeah. you work for or are a fan of. Like there's only certain staff allowed on the sidelines. It's literally a certain number, certain number of certain roles, even like camera crew. Like there's a very, very specific number of people that are allowed on the sidelines. So I find it very hard to believe that he was on the sidelines of two other opponents. In the stands, sure. Not on the field. Okay. Okay. But it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. He says. Yep. With gusto, with his freedom boner. Yep. It's coming. It is. Um, get subscribed everywhere that you can get subscribed. Follow us on social media. If anybody wants to run our social media for us, let me know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Take the content that we generate, turn it into memes and motion videos and clip out some of the stuff. I don't have time for it. Okay. Just make Chloe do it for now. She's going to listen to the show and be like, Mom, you guys are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't want my friends to ever know that this podcast exists. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, com for web and app development and hosting, any other technical IT roles as well. Mm -hmm. um, those are kind of infrequent, but... I do do them. I prefer not to anymore because those are the people that contact me frequently and I don't like my phone ringing. I'm just kidding. If you have that project, I'll help you. But at a premium. My rate is $255 an hour for those wondering. That's not a joke. Why are you staring at me? <laughs> Get to work then. Um, veteranwiki.org and veteranwiki is our 501c3 nonprofit. Um, 
putting together all the information for veterans, service members, family members, dependents, so that they know what to do, where to go, who to call. That's a very terrible synopsis of what the organization does, but um, I'm going to change it every time. Don't allow your kids to participate in sports where there's ties. Or if they do participate in sports where there's ties, make sure they win every time. And still the winning spirit. No participation trophies. You are exhausting. Participation trophies are the reason America became weak. And on that note. Changed my mind. On that note. Goodbye. Goodbye.